Welcome everybody. Today's video finds us over here in Siam Reap. We're up here in Angkor. We're uh, checking out some of these old temples. Today's video, we're gonna take, take a look at three different things. We're gonna take a look at a 9th century temple, then we're gonna look at a modern temple that's integrated into the ruins, and then we're gonna look at a 12th century uh, Bayan era, era temple. So uh, it should be kind of cool, so let's see what we see. Where we are is we're kind of in the middle area. We're over here near the uh, like the uh, terrace of the leper king and the elephant terrace and then there's a series of five temples that a Korean group is uh, sponsoring the restoration. But we're not going to look at this today. This is right here. Uh, we're going to look first at this ninth century temple and then we're going to go back over in there and walk through and uh, see some other stuff. So you can see around here kind of what it looks like. You have some of the stone carvings here. And these are, I believe those are like little Buddha images. So these were put in later on. There's some confusion about when a lot of this was constructed. So we have just a wall here with uh, the laterite stones and then a lot of the debris. Now the 9th century temple is right here and there's not a whole lot to see to it other than what we were just looking at. The base of the temple is all that's here, just down to the, the laterite stones that it was built on. But you can see some of the sandstone that they carved. You can see a little bit of the images with, uh, like these are part of the, like the entranceway. So you have like a Garuda, some of the Naga. You'll see a little bit of those pieces that they carved and then over here some more of it and then as you can see here this is just the the base you can see this is just kind of a kilter here this is a naga so this would have probably been on like the entrance way and then they would have had like a tail that would have crossed over and you can see there's not a whole lot to see here now all that's around it is kind of interesting there's a bunch of little markets all the vendors are selling stuff so if you're thirsty they uh, definitely will have something but they have it just like these walls here. And then as you can see, their little shop is just right here integrated into it. But this is Tep Pra Nam Temple. That's what this is called. And you can see kind of the big tall trees and stuff like that. Okay, so let's walk back there. This uh, entrance way here, it's quite long. It's probably like 70 or 80 meters or so. And it's just all these stones. And then over here you can get some uh, some food and some clothes and then uh, it's quite nice here because you got a little bit of shade the sun is so hot here in Angkor Wat so drink a lot of water and uh, enjoy the shade if you can you can see this is the end of this temple and this is where the new one begins so they have these lions right here and then the new temple they've incorporated a lot of the sandstone and laterite stones and they've made a huge walkway with the naga and the lions and all of that and over here we got another lady she's yelling at us hello sir she'll try to sell me a cold drink now what they've done here is uh, I'm not sure what these are all about it kind of reminds me of what they would have done like at a modern Thai temple with like the ordination stones because this just it surrounds this temple. This could be something from Hinduism also. It could be like the like the Shiva, like the little deity, because what I was reading about this temple is they incorporate Hinduism into it also, even though it's a Buddhist temple. And there are monks here, so we got a like a class going on over here, and then we have some more of the temple buildings. And then you'll have the modern Buddha and all of that here also. So you can see they have kind of an open air building here and then bathrooms and the monk residence and stuff. Yeah, you can see these. So these are the old, old laterite stones and they've just hauled them up and uh, built these little things. And they're just scattered all around. And then you have a, like a newer little wee hand over there. 
Let's look at this Buddha right quick and then we'll uh, go up to the 12th century temple. This is what it looks up like underneath here. It's just open air. They did put a few fans in here. So this is probably where the monks will come over and do the chanting. And you can see here the, the styling is quite interesting. That's what you would say is Khmer style with the kind of the square shaped face and the eyes are closed and it's just smiling a little bit. You can see the base it's on, it's like the, like the lotus. And then they have the huge candle burning over here. So people will come up, they'll burn the joe sticks, they'll leave their little offerings and they'll pray right here. And you can see the murals that they painted on the ceiling of this little hall. There's a butterfly right there on the robe. And that says something over there in Khmer. I'm not sure if those are uh, people that have donated to the temple or if it's, it looks like it, like somebody donated $200 and $40. And then this here, they probably have like a prayer also that people can pray whenever they come up. And uh, you can just see this is quite massive. I mean, my head comes up to about right here and then it, you can see how tall it is. You can see the modern buildings and over there the monks have their laundry and stuff hanging up and the showers for them. And then this is a cool little statue here also. You can see it standing. I think this posture might be like the subduing Mara. I can't remember exactly. But usually the palms will be flat and you can see the little symbol right there on their palms, the little prayer wheel and the eyes are closed again, elongated ears. You can't see the hair rolls because they have that blanket that's kind of came down. Now you can see how the Buddha is constructed. So what they've done is they've made it out of the sandstone and they probably took some of the old feet from uh, this temple also. So you see they've used those blocks and then they've used the laterite stones also from this old temple and then they've uh, made it into a Buddha. I've seen one like this one time in Thailand where they use like an old lintel, but it's pretty uncommon. Yeah, that is really nice. That's pretty interesting. You can also see these little markers that they have around how they've used just everything, all the stones. And then these are part of the temple here. These would have been like in the windows and then these columns. Yeah, I don't know where they would have got that from, but there's a whole bunch of them. There's probably 20 or so. Okay, so that's the modern temple. That's the second thing we're gonna see. Now we're gonna walk a short distance through the jungle here, and way back over here, past that big tree, is our last thing that we'll look at here in this video. Now this is not where the tourists normally walk up. Most of them go over there to the elephant terrace and there's like five different temples in that little valley. But I thought I'd come over here today and kind of explore. You can see the bamboo and they got some banana trees. And they do have motorcycles that come and go here. I don't know where the, the locals are going, but they ride up and down this little road. And got a couple kids playing over here. So it looks like their house might be back in there and then they sell some coconuts and stuff like that right here next to this temple. And we do have a couple security guards here to make sure there's no looting. And these big old tall trees. Now right here, this is the 12th century temple. Now the scholars disagree on a few things of this temple. The one thing they do agree on is that uh, the spire is like Jerryman the seventh era, but some of the other things they believe it might've been uh, renovated at a later period. So this is the walkway. This is Pa Li Le Temple. And uh, you can see the one lion over here that's existing. And then this one here is, uh, was a standing figure and it's just the feet. And it has the naga and then it has the sandstone. So this is 50 meters. This little walkway right here is 50 meters long with the naga and then their tail and you can see what's remaining of this right here on the balustrade. 
some of it's in pretty bad shape like this over here is just to the side and this would have been shaped like a like a crucifix you see some of the naga over there yeah this is cool so they've set these stones they put all this walkway down and the ones on the side right here they drilled some holes so they could install like the naga you can see a little bit of the holes right there and some of them will be bigger where they'll be like square for like a post and then these they carved on the bottom will have the like the male end that goes into that little hole and so here we go so this leads right to a buddha right here and this is not an original buddha it's one that's been added later so you can see the feet here these look like they've been added later because they have the the metal in them. Either that or they put that steel in there to keep people from packing them off. And then this is the Buddha image. And then they have a couple more of the feet right here. And there would have been one originally over on this side also, but it's not there. You can see the base is also those sandstones. I'm not sure this in here, they probably carved it out of newer rock than those other, where they didn't recycle the rock anyway. Okay, so this is the walkway so this is the entrance you can see the temple wall here and the low steps now the lintels here date this part of it to the 12th century so these are the stories here and this would have been built under Jeremiah the seventh he was known as the great builder he's the one that built so many temples around you can see the stone carvings here. It's quite nice. And then over there, right through the little entrance, they're got it propped up to keep the uh, thing from collapsing down. And it's in pretty poor condition other than this. We'll see the main part when we get in there. You can see the lintel here. Yeah, this is really nice. Now the doorway right here is really, really low. So you have to be careful or you will smash your head which I've done at these temples before. And this is inside here. So there would have probably been either like a Vishnu or a Brahma or Shiva in here. And then you can see how they've carved these stones to make them fit. And then your low, low door. And then they notch these stones here so they would have had ah, other things installed into them. This is the back side. And this thing is, it's like 30 meters taller, so it's so hot, so high. I can't even believe how they could build these things. I mean, this is a small temple here, but it's still, I mean, still a feat of engineering to build these. Okay, so this is the center part of it. And it's in really, really rough shape. So they've done a little bit in here to keep it from collapsing, but it's really, really falling down. So you can see all of this is different levels of this sandstone and they've carved all through here. This, you can't even see it because of the, the growth, but it would have had carvings in it also, the same as here. Each one of these on the outside would have been etched and all the way around. And then out here is just a bunch of the debris from uh, partial restoration. You can see carvings, and then it has these trees growing in here. And it's just uh, little bits and pieces. It's a big jigsaw puzzle. And it's a little hard to see up there. Maybe you can see it here. So you can see they would have had an entranceway, so you'd have craw walk, crawled up there and went in and they would have had an image inside of the center prong. So this isn't like the mountain temple with four prongs on the outside with the center prong. This is a different styling than what you'll see in a lot of them. You can see the, this is one of the lintels here. It has the whole story. I'm not sure what the story is. The scholars have analyzed these. And they know every little bit of it. And then there's just a tree growing right here. 
you can see the carvings here with all that moss growing. Same as this temple. We'll get on the other side, maybe we'll be able to see it a little better. Now I really, really would like to climb up there, but it does not look safe at all. And they have a sign there, do not climb. But you can see how these trees have overtaken this side right here. And then all the dirt that's built up over the centuries. So why they, the scholars disagree on the date of this temple is there are some Buddha carvings that are in perfect condition. So under Jerryman the seventh in the 12th century, there was kind of a reformation, I guess, where they were rejecting Buddhism. So a lot of the Buddha uh, temples were damaged, like the Buddhas were decapitated and stuff, and they were like really strict about Hinduism at the time. And then later on, after Jerryman the seventh, they embraced Buddhism again. And so the scholars think that since there are Buddha etchings at this temple, that this was maybe built in the 13th century. Either that or it escaped like the, uh, the destruction of the Buddha images. And they've moved a lot of those to another place to keep it from being you know, looted and vandalized. You can see here. So that one right there, that does to me look like one of the little Buddha images and they're just sitting out here in the stacks. And you can see how those humongous stones have collapsed down. So they would have to bring in cranes and everything else to lift all of this up. And they just probably have determined it's not really worth the effort. They may at a future time, you never know, because that group of five temples, the Korean group, maybe when they finish, they'll move over to smaller ruins like this. But this is quite nice. Now imagine climbing up there, and I don't even know how tall this prong is. Climbing up there and then hoisting up these humongous rocks. And you're doing it without a crane. You're doing it with sweat and muscle. I mean, that's after bringing all these in to build the walls, build the base and everything else. It's just, colossal. It makes you really feel insignificant here because I mean my head is right here. That's how tall I am and you can see how much further up that goes. Wow and this is the last side right here. You can see the tree roots so that tree died and they tried to rip it out. Now there would have been a little room up there. You can see the the windows and everything. So you would have been able to climb up these steep stairs to get up there. And now there's just jungle all around. You can see the tower and the prong is kind of collapsed. Yeah, this is really, really interesting. And you can see yet another one of these lintels that's over here. Just sitting out here, now it's just weathering underneath the trees. So one last look at this big, huge temple. So there would have been four entrances, and then there would have been four entrance, entrances into this prong. And all the gate would have been built up just like that over there. Those are called the Gopura, I believe that's what they're called. Now it's just debris and jungle out here. And that's the main walkway that came in. And this was a pretty important area back when this was being used. So there was uh, the Royal Palace nearby, the Terrace of the Elephants, and a whole bunch of other temples inside of here. And you have to remember, there were a million people living in this area. And now it's just the jungle. Well, that's going to finish up our video over here. We got to see a, a 9th century temple and a 12th century temple and a modern temple. So you could get a really a good feel of just the age of this area. And uh, just unbelievable. Just uh, now it's a bunch of bricks out here, but at one time this was a thriving city. It was uh, at one point the largest city in the world. And 
then it was all abandoned. Everybody moved over to Phnom Penh and there were just a few farmers that were left here. And all of these old just monuments of humanity have just been sitting out here in the jungle abandoned for uh, all of these centuries. And the jungle has recaptured them and you know they are made out of stone and the trees cause them to collapse plus the maybe the building material wasn't uh, as good so you know a wall will collapse and all of that so we got to enjoy it today it's uh, part of uh, this region's history and it's really really fascinating to me i just love to come, come out here and climb around on these temples if you enjoy it then smash the like button and uh, leave me a comment if you know anything about these let me know or you can tell me what you think i would like to uh, to know a little bit more and uh, if uh, you uh, are new to the channel subscribe and you're notified when I post a new video but uh, anyway from over here in Angkor remember life is a journey until next time enjoy mm -hmm.